Howdy folks, Doc here with Last Best Tool, and this beautiful little gem is the Kaioitz KTI K01 Thermal Imaging Camera. It's got much the same form factor and even somewhat operation as a traditional kind of point and shoot style camera in terms of the feel in the hand, the big shutter button for the index finger on off up at the top, the bottom you've got the USB-C charging, quarter 20 socket for uh, using a tripod. Um, on the back, just two function buttons. Those function buttons you can set quite easily, and those are maybe for the most used features you have or that you use. Um, and on the back, uh, big, bright, full color touch screen. On the front end, we got actually five different lenses here. This little guy here is a, is a light, kind of a fill light or a flash. This is laser range finding. This one is visible light. This is a laser spot for uh, targeting. And then this main one is the infrared lens right there. So as you're using this, you can uh, switch between modes quite easily. I've got this, this F1 and F2 set up um, for a gallery and for um, the thermal um, or the temperature range. But down here, just by simply touching this, I can actually move through uh, the different settings. I'll go back here and show you those. If I touch that, I've got gallery, I've got the uh, different types of image uh, image capture there. I've got the targeting. I've got the different palettes. Um, I've got the uh, control over the front end light, and then I've got my settings. So it's that simple. I'll touch gallery. There are two gallery modes. One is your local gallery. That's the onboard storage. The second is the cloud. This will Wi-Fi up uh, using Wi-Fi, just connect to a Wi-Fi network, to a, uh, sub, a um, cloud storage platform that Kiowitz hopes or hosts, and it allows you to drop your images right on that so they can be shared by anyone who's logged into that, or to uh, draw them down on your PC, uh, not Mac, but a PC, and then you can uh, use their thermal imaging software. Um, I'll go into my gallery in just a moment. If I go back uh, and go to the next one, there's my image mode. I've got infrared, I've got visible lights, traditional camera, Whoops, right there. I've got picture in a picture. This is kind of a combination that allows you to see uh, both the infrared and the actual visual. And then I've got a kind of a 3D-ish multi-spectral setting as well. Um, let me go into the object analysis. There are several things I can do. I can target specific objects, which is kind of cool. I can go in and draw um, shapes or um, testing regions, and then, of course, I can go in and I can delete all of those, you know, clear it out. Those are my settings there. Uh, my palettes, um, you've got white hot, black hot, or black heat, uh, iron red, uh, which is a common one there, hot iron, rainbow, and Arctic. We'll go back to iron red. That's pretty common. Here's where I can set my lighting so I can turn things on with a flash um, or I can turn on my light and that's that light now is active there. So if you've got a low light situation um, I can just turn those off too. And then lastly is my settings. You can zip through all kinds of different settings here. Um, if I'm using my functions, I've set the F1 here. I just push that and it's gonna bring me up to my gallery. So let's go ahead and run into that. So you got quite a bit of storage here. Um, here's somewhere I was exploring. This is greater, this fire greater than a thousand degrees. Um, and you can see that in my temperature range, uh, it says greater than the high end um, that this was working with. I was playing around with that. Um, this is what, what it looks like on the lower end um, for the grill. Three. Let me cut this light here. It might make it a little bit easier. Um, but anyway, you can see that somebody's sitting there, but I still have up to 308. It's In fact, that's a low end for a temperature scale there. Um, this is what it looks like. My camera focuses uh, looking into a forest about 44 or 40 degrees you can see, but it's it's picking up the difference between the trees. Um, I did some with the uh, the area. This is actually a dog laying in front of a wood stove. Uh, it's pretty high temperatures. So um, as I was exploring what was going on in these different areas, I found out something. It's kind of interesting. Uh, if I target this, 
This is a dog right there. And this is the heat coming off of a wood stove. You'll see that in a moment. And the dog is 133 degrees, 134 degrees on the surface. And this one is a is the wood stove. You can see the different temperatures. Um, we're actually doing some cooking on it. Thought I'd play around with that. That's what it looks like. I'm exceeding this. This is over 300 degrees, and that gives me a, a chimney look, which is kind of important. Um, if you're doing duct work, that's one big use for these, as well as finding, uh, you know, um, hot electrical systems or the, um, you know, friction in, me in mechanical systems. Another cool dog, person working. This is uh, a place where uh, electrical um, cords are, are um, uh, plugged in. You can see how easily I can navigate this. It feels somewhat like an iPhone. So that's pretty good playing around with that. But anyway, uh, if I go to my F2, um, go out of this, sorry, come on, out of my gallery, there we go. I can go into F2, and now what it's gonna do is switch through um, the three different temperature modes. So now it's actually, whoops, um, able to go to uh, different sensitivities. There's an auto one, there's a minimum, or there's a lower range, and then there's a high range. This is the high. You can see it goes up to a thousand degrees. So everything here stays the same color because it's the uh, differential between the objects is not enough uh, to fit into that scale. Um, if I drop it down to a lower temperature, now you can see there's stuff going on, including my hand. Uh, anyway, um, this comes with a case. This is what the case looks like. You'll see why I'm mentioning that, um, as well as the factory calibration certificate. But also, I've decided I'm going to use this DeWalt. This is one of those old school cell phone cases. You know, good to repurpose this. But the camera actually fits in there quite well, and it's much easier, and I can actually clip it to things or have it accessible to easily pull out and use versus kind of the traditional case, but if I was, you know, storing it in a toolbox, that's probably what I'd use. Anyway, I'll put a link to these below. Um, I'm glad that Kiwitz is really getting into this. They're known for multimeters, voltage testing, and uh, even a few hand tools. Um, quite affordable for uh, most uh, applications, but this is really a uh, kind of a next level look at, at um, thermal imaging cameras that are standalone. And the reason I, I point that out is because there, there are quite a few different thermal imaging cameras that either attach to existing uh, devices such as iPhones or uh, Android phones. And then there are kind of these um, sort of point and shoot radar gun looking uh, thermal imaging cameras. And then now there's this. Um, and compared to, or given its performance and compared to a lot of the others, it's, um, it's a high-end camera well worth it. And with that, dock out.